What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness across all social media platforms. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I'm a diagnosed narcissist and I use my platform to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims, survivors, and the thrivers, there's thrivers, y'all, of this disorder and the traits that come along with it. And the traits that come along, there's just toxic traits in general, y'all. You know what I mean? Not everybody's a narcissist, but a lot of people have toxic traits. Um, today's episode is going to be about how therapy, for me, as a self-aware narcissist, was an add-on. Therapy is an add-on. It just, yeah, I just, I tell you, people, people, so many people want to get that narcissist into therapy. It's like, what made you go to therapy? What was, what was the defining moment for you to go to therapy? I'm going to answer that for y'all right here. My wife did not make me go to therapy. If y'all think y'all can make, you can make a narcissist do anything that they want to do. I just, you on the wrong page. You cannot make force a narcissist. You can't, you give them ultimate, ultimate narcissists don't handle ultimatums. Well, you go to therapy, I'll leave. Bye. I can replace you. Do you want to get a quick answer right there? Or if they do go to therapy, it's not going to be beneficial to them because you're forcing them to go. I, I went to therapy on my own free will. My own free will, I went to therapy. My own free will, I went to therapy. And, and I've been in therapy since October of 2017. This has been five years. This is before the TikToks. This is before the Instagram, the YouTubes, the podcast, whatever. The number four ranked podcast on narcissists, by the way, Thank y'all so much for upvoting me and the, the five star rating. Dear Lord, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm. Thank y'all so damn much. I just, whew, that's, I'm super appreciative. I just looked at it today. I was number seven a couple of months ago. Now number four. Thank y'all. But, but therapy wise, y'all, therapy for me. People are like, what, what made, what was the defining moment? My wife called me a narcissist. That was, that was her, that was her input into my journey into narcissism. He called me a narcissist. I've always known that I was different from the time I was, but from the time I was young, y'all. From the time I was young, I was all I always knew I was different. I I I just have, you know what I mean? I've just always known that I was different. I just have. I, I knew I was. My emotions don't click like everybody else's. I knew I was different. I would just try to copy everybody else. I would fit. I put. I took everybody else's personality characteristics and personality traits and balled them up and put them into me, and I became who I am right now. It's just a build up, y'all. I'm just. I tell. I've been saying this for years. I am just an accumulation of personality traits from others that I've been jealous of, that I've been I've been jealous of, or that I've admired. I've took other people's personality characteristics and made made them my own. This is like adding on to my adding on to myself. You know what I mean? So I, I, I've always known that I was different. That's me. I've always known that way. I've always felt different. I just have. I know I was different. My emotion, I don't I don't cry like that. I don't you know I don't love like that. When I was younger, I was like, I, I used to ask myself like. Why are people holding hands and kissing? Like, why do you, how do you care about this person so much that you want to kiss them? That you want to hold their hand? Little stuff like that, y'all. That's weird as hell to be asking yourself as a young, a, as a preteen, as a teenager. You know what I mean? I've always known I was different. So my wife, my wife threw the word narcissist at me in a huge argument. She took her stuff up and left. Why? Called me a narcissist and left. What did your wife do? Called me a narcissist and packed her stuff up and dipped. She dipped. She absolutely dipped. She dipped. Called me a narcissist and I got inquisitive. I called her narcissist back and I got inquisitive. I was like, why the hell she called me that? You know what I mean? So I got on, t- I got on it's Google, typed in the word narcissist. And just like today, if you type in the word narcissist, one scroll or at the top of the page, it says something like, did you mean narcissistic personality disorder? I'm like, what the hell? I didn't, I, I didn't mean that, but I guess I, I'll, t- I'll check into it. And da da, ding ding ding. That stuff gave me the answers to the qu- finding about narcissism. Gave me the answers to the questions I thought I had already been asking myself. Why do I feel this way? Why do I think this way? Why do I behave this way? That's why I figured it out. I found it out. I understand it now. I get it now. You know what I mean? I, there's understanding there. I get it. I understand that. I get it. All this stuff started to make sense to me. I was like, damn. So that's why I do this stuff. That's why I act this way. That's why I behave this way. Because of this right here. I get it. I understand it now. And that's how my mind works. So, yeah. So there's no cure, of course. So I went to therapy. I got to join some self worth narcissist groups on Facebook. Thank y'all. Michelle, Manny, all y'all people. Rachel, all my, all my part of the original little crew. I remember from my self worth narcissist group days. Shout out to y'all. Um, so I remember joining those groups. I joined I joined those groups, and they told me how to go to therapy. They're like, "Hey, go on psychology today. Go to therapy." Went to therapy. Guy diagnosed. It's like, here I am. It wasn't an initial diagnosis. Y'all. I already knew I was a narcissist, but 
therapy was like, and what made you stay in therapy? Lee? Most narcissists don't go to therapy. They don't stay in therapy. What made you stay? Because since I was the 21, 22 years old, I was working at Blockbuster Video. I always like I've always been ambitious. And somebody tried to get me to join a network marketing company. So I was just like, okay. And that network marketing company preaches personal development. I got super ambitious. I started reading a bunch of books. I watching a bunch of YouTube videos about being a better person. You know, 48 Laws of Power. There's, there's, there's up in the air that they make you a better person. Um, 48 Laws of Power. How to Win Friends, Influence People, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. All, those, all the other good stuff. Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, all the people in my life. Eric Thomas, all the, you know, Gary Vee. They build up over. So I've been doing 10 years of personal development before therapy. So, this is so therapy was is to me therapy is just an add on to personal development. If you're already into Tony Robbins or Les Brown or Zig Ziglar, Jim Rome, the famous people, you know, uh, Ed Milet, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, all these people, if you're in a, you know, uh, impact theory with Tom Bill, you all those people, if you into that type of stuff already, Gary Vaynerchuk, all those people, you know, what I mean. Eric Thomas, Les Brown, all the, all, the, all the big ones. If you're into that type of stuff, that's what I was already into. I was already working on myself. So therapy to me was just more of that. So personal development, those courses and things that you see, the YouTube videos are catered for a wide audience. Therapy is catered for a wide audience, right? I mean, not therapy, but uh, the personal development stuff is catered to a wide audience. Therapy to me is just customized personal development for me. This what my therapy wouldn't work for somebody else. My exact therapy would not work for somebody else. My therapist probably would not work for, might not work for Ben Taylor, Raw Motivation, another self worth narcissist. My therapy might not work for uh, for Sarah at Cluster B Milkshake, another self self worth narcissist. You mean my therapy might not work for Sam Vacner or HG Tudor, whoever you know, other self worth narcissists. My therapy might not work for them. My therapy is ther- I feel like therapy is personal development that is customized for you. <clears throat> it's like Tony Robbins wrote a course just for you. That's why I feel like my therapist has done wrote a personal development course for for me myself for the last five years. That's why therapy works for me because I've already been working on myself. And this right here, therapy is customized personal development, customized mental health. It's customized for me. It's not it's not wide range. It's for you. That's why it works for me. Therapy, and that's why I can receive therapy. If I stay in therapy because it's for me, I'm selfish. It's for me. I'm, my ego is driven. It's for me. It's not for you. It's not for anybody else. They want to say my therapy. I talk about my therapy sessions and my therapy, what I go through and what we talk about in therapy right now. That's what I've been doing for the last three years. Like I said, last five years in therapy. The last two years, two and almost two and a half years. Now, well, it ain't two and a half. It's been two, two, May 19th of 2020 when I started my mental health TikTok. You know what I mean? But you look at my podcast, my podcast goes back to July of 2019. So if you're on my podcast on Apple Music or Spotify, scroll all the way back to the beginning, July, July 2019, and look how differently I talked. I haven't deleted those. I haven't, I don't even know what the hell I said. I know uh, when I listened to them at first, I, like, I was talking crazy. Go back and listen to them. Watch, watch, the per, watch the personal development. You can see it in real time. Go watch the personal development for me in July, 20, July of 2019 till where you see me in July of 2022. It's been three years. You know, of working on myself through the world in the world of narcissism, being a public public figure in the world of narcissism. Lee, you're not a public figure. I'm, I'm not. I, people call me a public figure. I'm on. I actually have. I'm on famous birthdays now. <laughs> they got famous birthdays. Lee Hammock, <laughs> thirty seven years old, y'all. It's kind of funny. It's kind of hilarious on famous birthdays. But that's how it goes, though, y'all. That's why I would say therapy works for me because it's customized for me. It might not work for your narcissistic partner. You know what I mean? You're a toxic partner and you can't make them go. I made them go to therapy. Good luck on getting any kind of discernible change from them because they're going to go to therapy and resent you for making them go to therapy, for giving them the ultimatum to go to therapy. My wife didn't give me no ultimatum. She just packed her stuff up and dipped, y'all. I just feel like y'all be making it seem like she did more than what she did. She packed her stuff up and bounced. <clears throat> Bye. I'm leaving. Took my little son and dipped. Bounced on me. You know what I mean? Dipped out on me. You know, things like that. And I'm, I'm proud. Like, she's a strong woman. I'm proud of her doing that. You know, she needed to do that. I'm glad she did what she needed to do. But it might not work for my therapy, my who I am, or how I got to the point where I'm at right now, might not work for who you're dealing with in your life. And that's not me trying to deter you. That's me trying to just say, if you're a narcissist, if you happen to, be, happen to be a narcissist and you're listening to this, 
Work on yourself. The person development stuff, Tony Robbins and this stuff is cool, but you, therapy is customized person development. In therapy, you have to be willing to go in there and be vulnerable. You just have to. Vulnerability and honesty are the only reason my therapy works. The only reason that your therapy works with Ben Taylor. Vulnerability and honesty. You have to go in and be honest and vulnerable. And, it, and it, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you right now. And vulnerable, vulnerable, I'm going to be honest and vulnerable with y'all right now. That sucks sometimes. There's a lot of shame that's associated with being honest about who you are, what you've done. Taking accountability. Accountability hurts y'all. It's, it's, like, it's like somebody stabbed you with a, the accountability butcher's knife or something like that. It, it's, it sucks. <laughs> it really does sometimes. But I hope this video brought y'all some clarity. If you happen to be a narcissist, you think you're a narcissist or a toxic person, and you're listening to this, go to therapy. Get on psychologytoday.com, wherever you are. I just, it's in Canada too. I just, I just saw this. If you're in Canada listening to this, it's in Canada too. So wherever you are, listen to that. You know, get, get on, get in therapy. Psychology today. You can search by a specialty. If you think you're a narcissist, go get some help, y'all. Just for, not for your family, for you. Once you start pouring into yourself, you become better for everybody else around you. Be honest, be honest, be, be honest and be vulnerable and things like that. I know people are just like, let you just add it to the stigma and make a narcissist seem like evil people and power. I don't do that. I'm just talking. You know what I mean? But anyway, y'all, before I close this thing out, live in person meet and greet Austin, Texas. And uh, the live in person meet and greet is in Austin, Texas, right? October the 15th. It's going to be live in person meet and greet. We're going to do live in person Q&A panel, panel discussion where we have people. We're going to be have people in the room. It's going to be small. It's not going to be a huge room full of people. We're going to have people in the room, allow everybody to ask questions to me, Ben Taylor, Raw Motivation, some psychiatrists, some other coaches and therapists. It's going to be like 10 of us taking questions and answers. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be an amazing event. Austin, Texas in October. And y'all, we're looking at Canada. Toronto, Canada, uh, in November. So it might do, but I don't know if you, how many people are in Canada on here. If you're in Canada, we're doing a live in person meet and greet probably sometime in November. We're looking towards November. I think November the 16th or something like that. So stay tuned for that type of stuff, y'all. If you, uh, if you listen to this on Apple Music, Spotify, hit that five stars for me on there. I'm super thankful for y'all. As much as y'all say y'all learn from me, I promise you I'll learn even more from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mental illness is out. Peace.